So now we are discussing about the lab program four. Lab program four is about uh, printing this pattern. This is how the pattern has been given to us. So the dots which I kept here is indicating the spaces where the patterns to be printed as numbers. In the first line, we have to print one. The n value is three, three rows to be printed. And in the each row, we have to print the numbers in this particular pattern. To solve these particular patterns, we need to use the concept of nested loops. Why we have to use the concept of nested loops, we'll try to understand now. First and foremost thing, we have to write a grid for this. So first and foremost thing is we have to write a grid and analyze the pattern, how they have get written this particular pattern. The n value is four, again, one more row to be added here. So that's why we have to analyze this pattern first. So I'm just writing how many rows are there, three rows are there. This is row number one, this is row number two and row number three. In each and every row, how many columns are there, we have to understand. This dot indicates a space here. For our understanding purpose, I have written here. So this is the first row. Uh, this is my second column. And this is my third column. This is my fourth column. This is my fifth column. This is my sixth column, seventh column, and so on. OK, let's try to understand this particular pattern first. So when the row is one, we have to print how many number of rows are there? Three number of rows are there. In every row, again, we need to have, we need to print columns also, and we need to, sorry, we need to print spaces also, and we need to print numbers also. First and foremost thing is we need to move across every row, right? See, I need to move across row one and then print so many spaces, and then I need to print a number. I need to move across row two and print so many spaces, and then I need to print the numbers. This is the pattern. So first, we have to understand how many number of rows are there and across how many number of rows I have to move. There are three number of rows. So for that, I'll be writing one loop to move across every row. So I'll be initializing an index variable called as i to the one, and I'll be move, moving across every value. So n value is three. Instead of taking it as three, I'll be taking it as n, and, I, and I'll be incrementing this. This is a row for moving across. Sorry, this is a loop for moving across every row. And in each and every row, we need to understand, we need to print two different things here. One is we need to leave a spaces. And again, we need to print the numbers. They are nothing but our patterns. Okay. First, let's try to understand how many spaces we need to leave here. In the first row, in, in which pattern we need to leave the spaces. In the first row, you can understand one, two, three, four, five, six spaces are there. In the row one, there are six spaces. In the row two, there are three spaces. In the row three, there are zero spaces. So it is in the multiples of three. If you analyze these spaces, see after every row, first we need to print the spaces. So that's why I'm writing a logic for writing this, printing the spaces. If you analyze this pattern, it is in the form of multiples of three. So how can we give this multiples of three so that we need to analyze and then we need to give that inside this particular for loop. Inside every row, first for a first row, when the I value is one, the i value is one. How many spaces I need to leave? I need to leave a spaces called as six spaces. How do I get this six spaces? What is my n value? n value is three. So n value is three. So I'll just make it as so three multiplied by n minus of i. If I do this, please try to understand what I'll get. So it is in the multiples of three. So I'm multiplying everything with respect to three. What's the n value? Three value. Three minus one is. 3 multiplied by 3 minus 1 is, it will become 6. So I'll be getting the 6 spaces for the first row. Let us take for the second row, the same pattern I'll apply. 3 multiplied by n value is 3 only. What's the i value for the second row? It is 2. It becomes 3 multiplied by 1. So the answer will be 3. Take it for third row. So n value is also 3 and i value is also 3. 3 minus 3, it becomes 0. 0 multiplied by 3, it becomes 0. So 0 number of spaces I need to leave. So I can write this particular pattern in such a way that so I need to start my for loop. I'll be taking it as J loop. I'll be initializing J to one. J should be less than or equal to this pattern I'm going to apply there. It is three multiplied by N minus of I. Why it is three multiplied by N minus of I? Because it is in the spaces are in the multiples of three. So I have just taken three multiplication. And when the, for the first row, I need to get six. N value is three. If I multiply by three directly, it becomes nine. But I want only six spaces. I thought I need to I need to subtract it by the value of row. So the row value was one. So I'm just subtracting that. So this logic, I'm applying it here. So after doing this, let me move this screen on the side. Just decrease its size. 
now on. So I'll just increment j step by step. I'll just increment j step by step. And in this for loop, what I need to print, I need to give the spaces only. I'll just give printf. I'll just give the spaces. After giving the spaces, then what I need to print, what I need to print, you need to understand, I need to print one here, one followed by two spaces and two here. Again, one followed by two spaces, two here. Again, followed by two spaces. I'll What I'll do, I'll just divide this particular problem into two stages. First, this is called as half part of my problem. And this is called as another half part of the problem. First, I'll try to print this half part of the problem. And then I'll try to print this another half part of the problem. Let's see how we can do this. Let's see how we can do this. See, first you can observe when the when the i value is 1, I'll be printing only 1. When the i value is 2, I'll be printing 1 and 2. When the i value is 3, I'm printing 1, 2, 3. It is as simple as that so that I can easily write this particular logic. And then I'll be worrying about another part of this particular problem. So another part of this particular problem. First, I'll be worrying about only this particular problem. And I'll be printing only this particular pattern. And then I'll, I'll get into this particular pattern. So for every row, when an i value is 1, I need to print that particular one value only. So what I'll do, I'll just take a j value or I can take another uh, variable called as k and I'll be initializing it to one where k should be less than or equal to, k should be less than or equal to i value. If it is one, it should print only one. If it is two, it should print only one and two and so on. So I'll just increment the k value. I'll just increment the k value and I'll just print. This time what I need to print, I need to print the k value. So I'll just give print of so I'll be printing the k value. For printing the k value, I'll give format specifier as percentage d. And after percentage d, you, you can observe here, we need to have a two spaces. In everything, we need to have a two spaces. So I'm just giving in this particular print itself, I'll be giving the two spaces. Please try to understand. Here after printing the percentage d, I'll be giving the two spaces. Then I'll, I'll close this. I'll just try to print what I need to print. I need to print the k value. Two spaces after that k value, I'll close this. Now, if I do this, when the when the i value is 1, what happens? It will enter into the loop. k value is 1. 1 is less than or equal to 1. The condition is true. Then it will just enter into the loop and it will print 1 here. After printing the stars, it will print. Sorry, after printing the spaces, it will print 1. And then a k value will be incremented. k value becomes 2. 2 is not less than or equal to 1. The condition becomes false. The so 1 is being printed. Similarly, it prints for every row. So after printing the spaces for the first row, 6 spaces, then it will print the number 1. Again, now second row, it will go after printing the three spaces, it will print one and two. But after printing one and two in the second row, it is my responsibility to print. It is my responsibility to print one as well. So that means after two spaces, I need to print one. Again, in the next row, I need to print two minus one. How do we get one here? Please try to understand how we can print this particular pattern. When the row value is two, when the row value is two, I need to print one. When the row value is I can say 3, I need to print 2 space 1, 2 spaces and 1. In the row value is 3, I need to print 3, again 2 and 1. So this is what we have to understand. How do we print this particular pattern? It is just I need to initialize my loop where it is. it, sh it should be i minus 1 value because i value is 2, 2 minus 1 is that is what the pattern it is printing and it should print up to 1. Again, when the, when the i value is 3, I will be initializing it to I can say 3 minus 1 and it should print up to one. So that's what the pattern I'll be writing here for, with respect to another for loop. After printing this, you just analyze, I'll be writing one more for loop, one more for loop, and I'll be taking this as again a J loop. You can give anything, no restrictions on that. So I'll be initializing it to I minus one, as I told, because I need to start my loop less than one, less than that particular uh, row value. I is pointing to the row, so it should be one less than that. And J should be, less than sorry it should be greater than one till till one it has to print that's what i'm saying so you can observe in every row it is printing till one so greater than one and i'll be subtracting j at every iteration what we have to print i need to print the j value and i'll be printing the j value i'll give two spaces followed by i'll be printing the j value only i'll close this this is what the logic and after this we have to give a printf statement also because a new line character after every row, it has to go to the new line. So after closing this inner for loop, after completion of these inner for loops, for every row, I need to give the printf function. So I'll just give printf function here. I'll give it as slash n. 
it is for new line characters. I'll close this particular for loop. If I run this, automatically this particular pattern gets printed. Automatically this particular pattern gets printed. Let's see through this uh, R code tantra. You'll understand where and what is happening. Then we'll try to understand this. We'll start coding for this. Okay, so now we have to code for this particular problem. See, when n value is 3, we have to print like this. When n value is 5, it has to print the pattern like this. When the n value is 0, it has to print the number of rows should be greater than 0. Let's try to understand this. So, so the first and foremost thing what we have to do is we need to enter the number of rows. So for that, we'll start coding. So we'll include the header file, which is necessary. That is a standard input and output header file I'm including. After that, I'll be starting my execution or uh, writing a program from the main function. And within the main function, I'll declare one variable called as n. Similarly, I'll be declaring another two, three variables for moving across the loops, which is ijk I'll be declaring. Now, I need to ask the user to enter the rows. I'll just write the printf function. This is what the first statement is, enter rows. Last user to enter rows. So user has to enter the rows now. So for accepting the rows, I'll be writing the scanf function. So I'll give it, since it is an integer variable, format specifier given is percentage %d, and I'll be accepting that value to the variable that is n. That is nothing but number of rows now. As I told, now I'll be starting the for loop for moving across every row, every row. I'll be declaring i value to one, as I told, and it should end at the number of rows. So I'm just giving i should be less than or equal to n and I'm incrementing the i value. Inside this particular for loop, first I'll be writing the logic for moving across every spaces, moving across every spaces. Okay. Now, how do we move across every spaces? For that, I'll be using one more loop called as j. As I told, j should be equal to one, and the spaces are in the multiples of three. You can observe six spaces here, three spaces here, and no space here. Here also, you can observe three spaces here, no space, three space, six space, Again, it is 9 space and again, it is 12 space. It is multiples of 3. So I told J should be less than or equal to 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by N minus I value. So this is what the pattern we have derived there. And I'll be incrementing the J value. And what we need to leave inside this, it is for pattern of spaces. So I'll just give one space inside this, nothing to do. And I'll complete this for loop inner for loop, then I'll, I need to print the half of this particular pattern. So for half of this particular pattern, so this is what I told, for half of this particular pattern, I told I'll be using one more loop. I'll be initializing with J, sorry, K, I'll be initializing to one, and it should be less than or equal to I value. When I value is one, it, it is printing one. When I value is two, it should print one and two. When I value is three, it should print one, two, three. So it should be less than or equal to I value. I'll be incrementing the K value. And then I told I'll be printing that k value. So since the format specifier is percentage d, and after every print, there should be two spaces. You can observe after every letter, there is a two space. So that's why I'm giving two spaces, followed by k value I'll be printing. This is for half of the pattern, and another half of the pattern we need to print. In the row one, nothing to print. In the row two, we need to print one. In the row three, we need to print two and one. That means in the row one, nothing to print means the value is. Uh, is i minus 1. I need to initialize to i minus 1 and I need to decrement until it reaches to the 1. Okay, that's what it is happening. See, so you can observe when the row value is 2, it is printing 1. When row value is 3, it is printing 2, 1. When row value is 4, it is printing 3, 2, 1. When row value is 5, it is printing 4, 3, 2, 1. That is, it should be initialized from 1 less than the row value. So that's what row value is stored into the variable called as i. So I'll be initializing. I'll take one more variable and I'll be initializing it to i minus 1. If the, whatever the i value is, I'll be initializing to i minus 1 value. And it should continue, should be greater than or equal to 1. It should continue and stop at when it reaches to the 1. So I'll be decrementing this, sorry, j should be greater than or equal to, I can say, 1. And I'll be iterating this until it reaches to 1. So I'm decrementing the j value. What I need to print, I just need to print the j value. And with spaces, two spaces is mandatory. So I'll give the format specifier a percentage d. I'll give two spaces. Now what value I need to print? I need to print the j value. And you can observe in every uh, row, after completion of every row, we are giving we are giving one new line character. So we are going to the new line character. So where our row ends, so once after completion of this particular for loop, 
I'll just give one more printf function. It is nothing but the completion of every row before going to the next row operation. I need to go, I need to take my cursor to the new line. So that's why I'm giving the new line character here. So let's run and see whether it works fine or not. This is what the code which we have written. Let's run and see whether it works fine or not. So it is asking for number of rows. I'll give number of rows three. So it is working fine. Similarly, I'll run this again and I'll be giving the number of rows as five this time. So it is working fine. Five for uh, fine for five also. Now I'll be giving the number of rows is equal to zero, which they have asked. If I give number of rows is equal to zero, you can observe that nothing is being printed. That means I have missed this particular case. So let me add that particular case as well. What it is saying that if the n value is greater than, if n value is n value is greater than zero, we need to perform this particular operation. I'll put everything under this particular if condition. Or else, if n value is not greater than zero. So in the else case, I'll be writing this saying that number of rows should be greater than zero. I'll be putting this particular print text in the print statement. Just copy this and I'll write a printf function. And inside this printf function, I'll put the text what they have asked and I'll give a new line character as well. So let's save this now and let's run this again. Now, now let's run for n value is equal to three. So it is working fine. Again, we'll run for n value is equal to zero now, it should print saying that it's okay. Number of rows should be greater than zero. So for the spaces, it is printing dots. So I will remove that. So it should be a space actually. I'll just remove that spaces. So that means when the n value is zero, we can't print that particular pattern. So it is saying that n value should be greater than zero. So now let's submit this. Yeah, it is being submitted. All the test cases has been matched. Please try to understand this problem we have decoded into three sections. One is for spaces, one is for printing the half of this particular pyramid, and another is for printing the next half of the triangle, or half pyramid, I can say it is. So that's how we ha I have decoded it. So if you have any doubts, please do let me know. We'll be explaining it again. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.